Mad Crab family, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Mukbang Monday. Today, I have in the house with me, Vince Taylor. Hey, what's up, world? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I knew Moline since back in the day, you know what I'm saying, when she used to do a little thing on the pole, but you know, she got saved now, and I just wish her success in her business and with the crabs and everything. So now we just line crab. The crab just, just line up. crabs up and That's it. Do a little butt on it and wipe that pole off with that towel. That's it. There it is. You still go that. So we met a few years ago through another com local comedian. So I kind of feel like I know you. All right. But I don't think I really know you. Uh, for, you were saying that last night, but um, yeah, I know. Uh, Take it. Which foot? Is it a good foot? Is it 
the left foot, and then I realized I was missing a toenail. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna look out for that. Vince, man, how did you get started in comedy? Oh, well, um, it's funny, man. Well, there's a couple stories, but the easiest one to tell is back in the day when I was working in the corporate world, um, one of my jobs at the job that I was working at was uh, to train incoming employees. And so you, we've all done that. You know, we had to start some job and got to sit there and listen to some dude tell us the do's and the don'ts. But I decided I wasn't going to do that. I wanted to make it more pleasant, you know, something that wasn't so, you know, boring and mundane. So I started making jokes during my during my own uh, presentation. I started making it real fun. And got to the point where some of my colleagues that were on the same level as me would come in and sit in on my training sessions just to see me. And I started hearing this frequently. I started hearing, "Bro, you're in the wrong business." Or you're funny, you, you need to try to do a stand -up. But for the whole time, I was like, man, whatever, that ain't nothing about that doing stand -up. Keep doing what I'm doing, you know. I didn't even go to school for stand up, I went to school for engineering. But I digress. There was a time in my life where I really wanted to be in entertainment, but I was thinking I was going to be more of a rapper. <coughs> Once I realized that dream was a little too far fetched, because I wasn't willing to be a 35 year old. Guy handing out mixtapes outside of <laughs> Mac Web. Not not been anybody that does, man. That's <clears throat> out. But um, I didn't want to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 the best uh, <clears throat> I ain't trying to be that guy. And these are all talented dudes, but I just didn't want to be that guy. Um, so when that presented itself as an opportunity, I said, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll give it a shot and see what happens. And we'll just try it out. So I had a friend at the time named Carlos, who's on the radio right now. Carlos was on a real radio, uh, 104.1 of the Monsters. He wasn't at the time, though. He had gotten released because of an altercation or something else you can it. And um, he was doing stand-up, so I would follow him around, see how he would do his thing, see how how much work I needed to do. The more I watched him, the more I felt comfortable doing it. Until I finally said to him after the show one time, I said, hey, I'm thinking about getting into this. He's like, dude, I help you out, bro. I'll take you where you need to go. I'll, I'll, do, I'll introduce you to who I know. Uh, I'll take you some places. What do you want to do, bro? I was like, look, I just want to, you know, get some stays on. See if I even, you know, am worthy of doing it. Hell yeah, hell yeah, bro. I got you, bro. We're, we're going to go to this place called Best of British. It's on International Drive. We'll go. I'll take you. You know, we'll have a good time. I was like, all right, cool. So I went out there. Did my first little set. In front of like six people. <laughs> I was supposed to do like five minutes, but in usual Vince Taylor fashion, I did like 20. I always go over my time. That is never. <laughs> that is that is one thing that I. That is true for me. I have a problem sticking to my time, but it went well for the most part. So after the show, he offered me another gig with um. It was Carlos, Pedro Lima, Ken Miller, and um, myself, and it was a paid gig. So like two weeks after I, my first set, I got paid. And it wasn't but 120, 130 bucks or something like that. But something happened when that check hit my hand, you know? I was like, wow. I was like, so if I get up on stage in front of people and say some words and they laugh, then I get paid for this? I was like, yo, I just got paid a whole day's worth of work. And I did 10, 15 minutes on stage. And that's when it clicked. I was like, this can go on, you know? I had the yard mindset. So that's when I started taking more serious. And oddly enough, that very day, I think Kim, you had Kim Miller. I had Kim Miller on the show. Yeah, what's happening, Kim? Um, Ken, after he saw me that day, even though I think he just gave me gave me this gig because he didn't want to do it himself, <laughs> he gave me my second paid gig, uh, which was at a place called Sh place called Shakers in Sanford. Man, it didn't go as, as well as, as all the other gigs uh, went at the time, but I still got. What is paid. that like a strip club? Uh, it, it was. Uh, it's, it was like heroes, you know what I'm saying? It was like co-op, you know what I'm uh, saying? It was it was a hood club with you know, and I don't and I was at, I was a young comic, so I didn't really understand the concept of a set. I just thought you get up there and say some funny stuff and everybody laughs. I didn't know that there were different types of crowds and different um, you know genres, so to speak, and different laugh, different uh, comedic 
uh, uh, styles and different different crowds that want to hear different type or to see different type of comics. So I went up and down, got drunk, slurring all my words. I was talking and winged ain't fine. It wasn't it wasn't really a good set. In fact, Type Mike, who you know, mm -hmm. was there. And he when I got on stage, I did 20 minutes. He said, "Bruh, you just did 20 minutes and five of it was funny." And I was like, whoa. <laughs> but I didn't realize, you know, I, I was so drunk. But that was a part of my development, you know what I'm saying? But the point is, I started comedy in January 2000, like January 2010. By January 2000, I had my first check. And then a week or two after that, I had my second cash payment. So within a month, I had already started accumulating money off of comedy, which just made me look at it completely different because I had tried rapping when I was in my younger 20s and I didn't make a dime. I didn't make nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was all about us walking around looking tough. You know what I'm saying? Just going to each, going to festivals and rapping and doing battle raps and stuff like that. But didn't never see a lick of money. You know what I'm saying? I spent a lot of my own money. And a lot of it was, you know, was money that, you know, I acquired, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, through means mm. that uh, mm. were less ethical than, you know what, you know, fast forward to this part right here, because I don't need Brody uh, trying to get into the DeLorean. Yeah, like he's probably taking notes right now. <laughs> 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 you know, his gloves is pretty good, so what's his latex? What this is? Uh, not on my hand. Let me tell you, you, you wearing, you wearing $30 on your hand right what? now. Bro, I'm taking these on Washington. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, but answer your question, that is, it was, it was my, and I got a shout out to my, my good friend, Brian Leon who was um, instrumental in pushing me to the stage. He was a guy that was working with me at my job. And he's the one that after almost every training session, he would come by and be like, dude, you're in the wrong business, bro. You, bro, bro, you're funny, bro. You're like really funny. Like, you should consider like doing one of those, you know, like, you know, like an open mic or something. And that's when I finally got the courage to say, you know what, what the hell, you know, I'm not getting the counter what the words I got. So is comedy something that you do full time? Like, is this your only job? Like, is this how you pay your bills? Um. Well, yes and no. I am at this point dependent on my comedy income, but it is not my sole entity. Uh, I do also have multiple offices in which I deal with tax and accounting, bookkeeping, the same hood stuff that I focus on. But I do a professional. I just don't like to talk about it because I don't want to be put on that same level. Uh, these folks are out there telling me. You know, nine, nine, ten thousand dollars per child, and all sort of stuff. I, I keep my, own, I have my clientele base. I have my staff. We do our thing. I get my, my annual income that pays off all the bills, and then I'm free after May to remove, to run the world, travel, uh, you know, do comedy on the cruise ships, do it in other countries, do it in places that pay me to come to their spot. You know, like I got paid to go to Japan. I got paid to go to China. Um, I did. I just performed in London last year for the first time. They get paid for that, but you know, it's the good. Experience. It's, it's good to knock that off the bucket list. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, even the country, I have not been to all 50 states. And as racist as our country is, there's still a lot of pretty places that I want to see. You know, I've never been to Alaska or Hawaii or, or New Hampshire or Maine, you know, or Montana for that matter. You know what I'm saying? And so this has allowed me to see sectors of the country and of the world that I would not have seen if I would consume this. And I'm a big travel, you know, nerd. I love to travel. So I, one of the incentives that I had when I first started, I said, okay, I'm going to talk about my mind full. If, if I, if I, if I <laughs> oh, my mind. There go that evil one. I, mean, I know. <laughs> got that evil, man. I don't get no flu shots over here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, it was when I got those first checks that I realized how possible it was. As opposed to, you know, because sometimes, you know, before you started your business, you know, people might have been telling you, like, nah, bro, don't do it. You're always a waste of money. Oh, he's, he's going to go out of business. Ain't nobody going to come over there. You know what I'm saying? Like, er, people will tell you everything, but you can do it. But it's possible. And sometimes people don't see your vision. It takes your vision to put forth the effort you want to put in to make it possible. And look at your neck. You know what I'm saying? Well, I have to be honest. I was, my, I was actually my own worst, worst critic because I'm not a risk taker. So for me to go to my job every day, 
I know how much money I'm gonna bring home if I work 40 hours. Mm -hmm. I know if I got a bill due and my 40 hours ain't gonna make, I know how much overtime I need to work. Right, right. So I know what I'm gonna get, but coming here, yeah. I didn't know what what was gonna happen from day to day. Big so for the first two, three years, I was so inconsistent here. Oh yes. Oh, yes, you were. I'm supposed to be open Thursday. You come on your lunch break. Where the mad crab lady at? She ain't here. Molly! Molly! I know you in there. I see the car right here, Molly! <laughs> I know you're here. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Push in one the whole box. All right, hold on. Let me see here. Molly! <laughs> Yo, hello, Molly. Yeah, what's up, man? You at work? Who, who, who? Who is that? Man? Yes, she was inconsistent. But let me tell you. But it's all good. You have to do what you have to do. But. My dad and a, um, a mutual friend of me and yours actually sat me on my couch one day. And my dad was like, listen, you gotta make a choice because, you know, I, I had left this place for about three months, but I didn't know my dad was still paying the rent here. Oh wow. He was still paying the bills because he knew, like, I know you can do it. So he said, you need to tell me, like, what is it that you're going to do? Because I'm not going to keep paying the bills mm -hmm. if you're not going to. I went to work, right? Yeah. I worked six months worth of overtime, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because I knew I was scared that I wasn't going to have enough, make enough money to pay my bills. So I made enough money to pay my bills three months ahead of time. Smart. And I came in here. I prayed. And I did it, and it worked. Uh, like, and then I thought, like, wow, like, really, I should. It w where would I have been if I wouldn't have took them three years? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I said, if anybody, like, just take a leap of leap of faith. You can't have faith and fear. You got to pick one or the other. You don't have faith, you don't have fear. You know what I'm saying? And so it is hard for some people who aren't risk takers because that was a hard decision for me. But I'm definitely glad that I took it. I'm glad you took it too. Now we can keep it real though. Camera's off. You know, damn way you get out of that whole time. Stay away from the bad ass kids. Yeah, I don't know if y'all know our kids when they some bad ass. Uh, I would have took all of them. Oh my goodness. If you need to go ahead and go back to the job for a vacation. <laughs> you gotta go to work for a vacation. Man. That's all right. He get bad though. But they good, they good staff. But that's only because she ain't got to pay the air because they don't pay no rent. You hear that, Adrian? Watch out. You see that, y'all? I didn't play, y'all. Y'all, yeah, please, DCF, don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Not today. So, you know, I stalk your page. No! Don't stalk my public social media. I, well, you know, you? I knew I was going to see you tonight, oh, so I definitely God. had to do some research because... Oh. Um, you really? haven't really been posting like you normally posted when I first met you. I stored it back up though. So I day. had to figure out, well, what the world is Vince got going on right now? Mm -hmm. To be able to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I noticed that, of course, you've always been a traveler. Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're working on a cruise ship right now? Yeah, yeah. I work on a Carnival cruise line, um, as well as Bahamas Paradise cruise line. Um, and yeah, they're, they're I mean, that, that is a blessing in itself. I'm not gonna lie, like, carnival. How is that though? How is it, like, how is that experience? Oh my God. Well, hmm. Ain't no mad crap on the cruise Oh, I, listen, I love, love working on cruise lines. I love it. I mean, some are better than others. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna put anybody on blast. But I will say that when I work on Carnival, like I feel like I've made it, like as a, as a comic. I mean, it, you're basically it's a nine to five comedian job. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the job that a comic would want if he really wants to get his numbers up, uh, 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 set wise. Now the thing about Carnival is you don't have to promote yourself because they do such a good job of promoting. You. There's another boat that I was working on where you are the sole. Uh, uh, um, you know, member of the marketing staff. You know, you if you don't tell nobody about the show, nobody gonna show it. So you spend your days telling people about the show, and then your nights performing at the show. And that's a hard job. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> worth it because you get to meet people, and then when they come to the show, you know their names and know all their business. But that's when you gotta wake up in the morning. 
and all that women. So a carnival, you literally show up to work and it's a full house, <coughs> whole five, six, seven, eight hundred people sitting there waiting up after. And all you gotta do is just do your thing. Now here's where it gets awkward though. On carnival, typically you gotta do like five shows. All right, so what they'll say, they'll send you an email, they'll say, all right, I want you to do five shows, uh, two PG shows, and then three R-rated shows. You're not to repeat your PG show, which means you do the same material that they did on both shows, but for your R-rated shows, you have to do two separate shows, and then you can repeat one of them. Now, depending on how much material you got, you know, that's no big deal. But if you ain't got that kind of time, you find yourself stalling, Sitting there trying to do crowd work, depending on the crowd and have reactions. And it really tests your ability to really truly sink into the, you know, sink the team into the crowd. Well, I've seen you perform before, so I know that that's not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, and thank you so much for the compliment. Mm -hmm. But um, it wasn't all right <coughs> my first time. Because, I mean, I perform. I do, you know, I, you know, I do the Black History Project. And I like to teach black, uh, you know, young black uh, high school students about their history and their heritage and stuff that they're not teaching in high school because it's not politically correct to talk to them about Stokely Carmichael and Benjamin Banneker and Garrett A. Morgan and Matt Pence and all these other heroes outside of Kodak Black and freaking you can be a young boy. Right. Know? All right. So I don't have a problem performing in front of the a kid, especially high schoolers, but when you get on stage and there's a two-year-old on the front row with a pacifier <laughs> in his mouth, you know what I'm saying? They kind of mess my head up a little bit like, hey, anybody ever? I saw that. 